anticipation of, of good things and of uh, advantages and nourishment mm -hmm. and encouragement and provoking that uh, only, only is experienced and gained in the, in the assembly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has uh, designed uh, the body of Christ uh, in this way that when it comes together, see, a, bo a body is an entity that's together. Yeah. That's a body. It can't be a body if it's fragmented and separated. And so being, being together is the essence of a, of a body. And that's where the, uh, the members, uh, being members of one another, finds its, its, its function is uh, ministering uh, to one another. I wanted to thank Brother Mike for playing uh, like he does before the as as we're gathering and uh, that's a that's a ministry in itself that I don't want to don't want that to be overlooked and un, unmentioned it's good to the just puts you helps us to uh, gain a, a frame of mind of of uh, ministering to one another and receiving from the Lord and and uh, starts to gird up our minds for for the assembly and I'm, I'm grateful for brother Mike's uh, ministry to us in that way uh, I want to begin today with some thoughts, some thoughts about thinking. Our assembly, from the outside, it looks like we gather together and we just talk all day. You know, and that, that could be, from the outside, that could be a bad thing. It's like, um, we just talk. We just, we just come, to, we just sit and we just talk for hours and hours. That's what it looks like uh -huh. on the outside, but, but it, uh, things aren't always as they appear on, on the outside. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, Amen. that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So this is this is both a an individual endeavor and a <coughs> and a corporate endeavor. Mm -hmm. So you you're responsible. This is part of you working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Is be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But it's also something that we minister to one another in and helping one another, assisting in renewing our minds. So everybody knows this is kind of common knowledge. Be not conformed to this world. But I think less people know how that's accomplished. It's by, by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So <clears throat> the activity of our minds, what we think about, how we think, what, what fills our minds? Everybody's mind is filled with something. Amen. There's no way for, for uh, any, anyone who's made in the image of God to just be empty and void of all, of all contents and all thoughts and all, all movements. Everybody, everyone's mind is filled with something. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. So our, our um, advancement in not being conformed to the world and, and in being... Con um, being transformed into the image of Christ, the, what's, what's behind that transformation is largely what we're thinking about, yeah. is the activity of our mind. Here's another example of this very thing in connecting our likeness to Christ with what we think about is in Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 23, and this admonition is sandwiched between two other admonitions. The first admonition of, is putting off the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And then the second one, verse 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And so <clears throat> what is, uh, what makes your putting off of the old man effective and putting on the new man effective? Be, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Same, same word, really the same exhortation as Romans 12 too. Yeah. Yeah. In being not conformed, that's the putting off of the old. Mm -hmm. And be transformed, that's the putting on of the new. And in between the two, you have the renewing of your mind. Yeah. So in the assembly, we, this, is, this is like a major uh, um, mainstay of the, of the assembly, of, uh, is renewing one another's minds. Yeah. Renewing, of course, has to be, another way of saying that is made new again. The root word, of course, is new, and the prefix is re is, uh, is again. It carries the idea of again. We're making our minds new again and again and again, and this is a catalyst for transformation. Mm -hmm. It's a catalyst for us becoming, um, advancing more and more into the image of Christ. 
Here, just in quick, um, quick mentioning, there's sev several other texts that have to do with our mind. Philippians chapter 4 is that, that famous text where Paul says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are worthy of praise. Think on these things. Yeah, right. Think on them. Is it, you're going to have to exert yourself and be determined to, to, to do this, to rule over your mind and, and over your thoughts. Think on these things. You're going to have to... You're going to have to love these things, to, to think on these things. Here's another one in Hebrews uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, there, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our faith. See, this is exhortation that has to do with your mind, the activity of your mind. Wasn't it Solomon that said, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. The, what, what the activity of our minds play a, has a huge, huge role in our our good in the good fight of faith in our working out of our salvation with fear with fear and trembling here's another one that comes from the law but this is this was jesus's answer when he was asked the question what's the great commandment is love the lord thy god with all thy mind uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. i can't think of a better way than to love god with your mind than to than to be constantly filling your mind with what god has said uh -huh. it's loving god with your mind is thinking meditating David, at one point in the Psalms, he said that he, he prevented the night watches that he might meditate in his word. It was like he got, he got up before the sun got up so that he could think about what God had said. The meditation. Jeremiah chapter 31 was where the Lord promised a new covenant. I will make a new covenant. And one of the hallmarks of that new covenant is that he would put his law in their minds. He would write it in their hearts. He would, he would internalize what he said, and it would... It would impact their, uh, the, the people's very being, who they were. It would be written in their, in their mind, and it would impact how they think. He would, he would put it in their minds. Yeah. And so <clears throat> the, uh, the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant is that the law, the law makes the transition from the doorpost to the mind post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was put on the doorpost under the Old Covenant because it wasn't in their minds. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't a part of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now the... The, the word put in their mind, that's Jeremiah's way of saying what, what James said, the, the engrafted word. Right. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. So I, I want to exhort us this morning as we begin, like Peter exhorted uh, his writers in 1 Peter 1.13, gird up the loins of your mind. The, the mind is like, is like a tool that has to, be, it, it has to be put to work. It has to be utilized. It has to be implemented. Like a plow has to be put into the ground. And, and, and connected to the animal before it can do its work. Gird up the loins of your mind as to you know, get, get your mind uh, to ready to think with the Lord, ready to, to, to uh, meditate and to follow the, the leading of the Spirit. Gird up the loins of your mind. One, one reason that we have to do this is what we've come together to think about is worthy of this, of, of this labor, the, the labor of your mind. Not only is it worthy of it, but it's also needful. The, 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 this great salvation that Jesus has accomplished for us and, is, and continues at the right hand of God to work out as a, a mediator and a high priest, it, you're going to have to think about it again and again and again. We're going to have to come over this again because it's, because it's deep. 1 Corinthians 2.20 says that the Holy Spirit has revealed these things to us that God has prepared for them that love him because he searches even the deep things of God. So when you're standing on the shore and you look at the water, you can't tell how deep it is at, di at different points. As you get into the water, you can find deep places. Yeah. See, and, the, and so the, in the assembly is where we want to find the deep places yeah. in, the, in, in the water. Yeah. Jesus said in John 16 to the disciples, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Mm -hmm. yeah. He told them what they could bear at the time, and later he told them what they could now bear that yeah. they couldn't bear at the uh, earlier times. So our, our assembly together and thinking about these things, girding up the loins of our minds, we're going on so the Lord can show us more, yeah, so he yeah, can tell yeah, us yeah, more. Yeah. The Lord's not going to tell us until we can bear it, yeah. but he will tell, tell us when we can bear it. Yeah. So as we open up uh, this morning, uh, Brother Ricky's going to have our class. Colossians 2.2, um, it kind of encapsulates these things, these thoughts that I have brought to you. Paul, this is a prayer that he prayed for the Colossians, that their hearts would be knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. Yeah. 
And I was, I was provoked by that, that Paul prayed in this way. He connected uh, in, his, in his prayer our, our uh, connection to one another, being knit together in love. He directly connected to our understanding, the full assurance of understanding. And so I, I suggest that the assembly is a place where we can make, we can make advancements in our understanding that we wouldn't make in the prayer closet. Amen. There's things that happen in the prayer closet that don't happen in the assembly. But here's something that happens in the assembly that doesn't happen in the prayer closet. So our, as our hearts are knit together in love, then we attain to the riches of the full assurance of understanding. So I, I bid you to anticipate these things this morning as we meet together. Let's pray.